You're watching 11 Alive Morning News. 11 minutes of nonstop news starts now. Time now, 646. We are kicking off your 11 minutes of nonstop news. Here's what we're following for you this morning. A community demanding change this morning after three people were shot and killed in the West End area of Atlanta. What we know right now about this investigation. Plus, VP Kamala Harris heading to Atlanta just hours from now, while she'll be visiting our local historically black colleges and universities. And temperatures are on the cool side starting off this morning, but will heat up nicely as we head into the afternoon. Details coming up. People in Atlanta's West End area trying to make sense of a triple deadly shooting that happened over the weekend. This morning, we are learning more about the victims. 11 Alive's Brittany Klein-Peter joining us live this morning. Good morning, Aisha. Loved ones gathered not too far from here yesterday near where Atlanta police say those three people were killed. They were joined by members of the Young Generation Movement demanding change. Police say 38 year old Jarvis Scott, 20 year old Jacoby Maddox and 17 year old Darian Johnson were involved in the shooting. One of the three is believed to be the suspect, but police have not confirmed which one, only telling us that one of them walked up to the two others and began firing. Hiring. Again, no, sus or no suspect has been named as well as no motive in this case. Aisha. Brittany, thank you. Happening tomorrow, Vice President Kamala Harris will be in Atlanta. The vice president will speak with students from local HBCUs. This video is from May, the VP's most recent visit to Atlanta. According to the White House, tomorrow she will have a moderated conversation with Spelman, Clark Atlanta, and Morehouse students. The conversation is expected to include reproductive freedom, gun safety, voting rights, and book bans. Former President Jimmy Carter and First Lady Roseland Carter making their first public appearance in months. They kicked off the first weekend of fall at the Plains Peanuts Festival. The Carters were seen riding through the parade and waving. Former President Jimmy Carter entered home hospice care earlier this year. In less than a week, he will turn 99. The Carter Center says the community can wish the former president a happy birthday by posting on its special wall online. Construction will start next year on a new state patrol post in Metro Atlanta. The new $1.3 million facility will be in Buckhead near the governor's mansion. Nearly 30 state troopers will have access to it, but 12 troopers will be directly assigned there, providing security for the Buckhead community and surrounding areas. The post would be on Woodhaven Road right off of West Paces Ferry Road. Governor Kim says his top priority is to keep Georgians safe. And that was a look at your top headlines for a Monday morning. Chesley, how are we looking out there? Looking pretty good. Not bad at all. Things uh, on the cooler side in some spots. You can see some 50s sprinkled in with these 60s that we have around. In fact, 55 degrees right now in McDonough. Over toward Conyers as well. You're at a pair of nickels there. 54 in Noonan, Peachtree City at 54. 57 degrees in Fayetteville. You're at 60 in Marietta, but 55 in Dallas, over into Hiram, over in Paulding County. Ackworth, you're at 60, but 54 degrees over into Temple in Northern Carroll County. 63 degrees in Tucker, 60 in Roswell, and 63 degrees right now in downtown Atlanta. It's going to be a decent afternoon. What are your plans? Even though we're going to have partly sunny skies, it will be on the warm side. Temperatures right around 86 degrees, so uh, maybe climb a tree. Take a look out, you know. Hootie who if you're a Kennesaw State Owl. We're looking at, again, winds uh, out of the west on the light side today, five miles per hour or less. So it will be a, a decent afternoon for us. Warm, we're going to call it warm, but a decent afternoon. Notice the rain back down here to the south and west of our area over toward parts of Louisiana moving into Mississippi. We'll make it here today, although our rain chance will start to increase over the next couple of days. Stationary boundary down here to the south. Our winds will shift to more westerly as we head into the afternoon, but very light, very, very light uh, for today. This map here shows us where where the dry air is and we got up to 86 for a high yesterday, but it felt comfortable, especially if you were in the shade. We're going to do that all over again today. The dry air stays in place. Now tonight we'll see that moisture start to increase back over our area, meaning that we'll start to see a few more clouds moving in and a small threat for some rain on your Tuesday. We'll give it a 10 to 20 percent chance by Wednesday up to a 30 to 40 percent chance. We'll hold it right there for Thursday and then by Friday some drier air will finally start to work back into the area just in time for the weekend. It will be nice and dry for us and temperatures back to where they should be for this time of year. Uh, 20 percent chance for the rain tomorrow. As we said, 40 to 50 percent, oh, sorry, 30 to 40 percent chance over Wednesday and Thursday and then back down again by Friday. Now we need that rain, folks. I know that may put a little hiccup in your plans, but notice we should be closer to uh, 38 inches for this time of year. We're uh, just below it, uh, we're actually below by a little over four inches for the year. So we need some more rain to add to the rain bucket. And so that 
threat on Wednesday, Thursday is actually a good thing for us. Here it is, our forecast track model. You can follow along with me at the time right there at the top of the screen. Shows the clouds in place for this afternoon. Partly sunny skies will be the call. Clouds increase tonight into tomorrow. We'll have uh, mostly cloudy skies at times on your Tuesday with a very small chance for an isolated shower or two to pop up. That chance increases as we head into Wednesday. We'll be looking at that front sliding a little bit further back to the north. Notice mostly cloudy skies out there. And with the clouds and the rain threat, our temperatures will be lower. So tomorrow, close to where we should be at 83, but 77 for the high on Wednesday, Thursday, 78. And then we'll bounce back as we head into the upcoming weekend. Some tens on the wisometer, but temperatures remaining in the low 80s. We knew this morning right now, Uber Eats is taking steps to make sure more people have access to fresh groceries. Starting next year, the company says it will allow customers to use food stamps or their SNAP benefits, EBT cards to make orders. That will not be the only change the company is making next year. Uber Eats will also start accepting flexible spending account cards and flex cards. Big news for those of you who do rely on SNAP benefits to feed your family. Starting Sunday, October 1st, you can expect an increase in your benefits. The price increase is determined by the size of your household and the cost of living in the U.S. Thanks to a recent cost of living adjustment, SNAP benefits will get a 12.5% bump for 12 months. So here's a breakdown of the new maximum monthly amounts. For one person, it's going to be $291 and for a family of four, the maximum will now be $973. The Art Institute of Atlanta is shutting its doors for good. Starting September 30th, the Art Institute's system of schools will be permanently closed. The move impacts all of their schools across the U.S. The Institute says, quote, a culmination of events over the past decade has forced the closure, adding that they were unable to absorb the impact of the pandemic. Right now, there is no word what's going to happen with those students that were set to graduate in December. Students were provided with details on how to get their transfer papers, and the school said it is working with partners to help with those transfers. A link is available right now to students from the government to get some assistance. All you have to do is click this story right now on 11alive.com. Taking to the football field and making history while showing the men how we ladies do it. It was pretty crazy because, um, I mean, the whole game we were just making plays. So, you know, even to make a bigger play, make, make history in the moment of it too, is like, you know, everyone was hyped up. Um, you know, Coming up on the Today Show, how this college athlete is breaking barriers of what roles women can play on college football teams. Changing leaf colors is something a lot of people love about the fall time. Some of our viewers have some questions about these leaf colors and how do they get so vibrant? So let's verify. Does the summer weather conditions impact the timing of fall leaf colors? Our sources are the U.S. Forest Service and a blog by Harvard Forest, Harvard University's Ecological Research Lab. The vibrancy and the length of the fall colors, well, that all depends on the amount of moisture in the soil throughout the summer and fall weather. A drought in the spring could delay when trees grow leaves, which can delay the onset of fall colors. Harvard Forest says a summer drought could stress the trees, causing them to lose their leaves early. The best fall colors happen when there's warm, wet spring, followed by a summer with average temperatures and rainfall, and also fall with sunny days and some cool nights. So yes, summer weather conditions do affect the timing of the fall leaf colors. Chesley, good morning. Good morning to you, Aisha. Good morning, everyone. You got plans this afternoon? By noon, temperatures will be right around 81 degrees. Looking at partly sunny skies for much of the day, even though at times it will appear mostly cloudy. We're not looking at any rain coming out of those clouds. It's going to be a warm afternoon for us as temperatures will be well into the 80s. I'm thinking 86 for your afternoon high temperature by six o'clock. We'll drop back down to 83 degrees. Northwest breeze at about uh, six miles per hour or less for today. Tomorrow clouds will start to increase and our rain chance goes up by the middle of the week. Looking at Wednesday and Thursday with a 30 to 40 percent chance for some rain. Atlanta's very own Usher is heading to the main stage at the Super Bowl. That's right, the mega superstar will be the star of the halftime show. We're doing the Apple Music halftime show. Are you serious? Yeah, man. The Super Bowl in Las Vegas. How you know? You just heard one of several announcements in this video. Usher is talking to his younger self displayed in his 2004 Confessions 2 music video. The announcement also came down with videos from Deion Sanders, Kim Kardashian, Marshawn Lynch, and Odell Beckham Jr. Usher's Apple Music Super Bowl halftime show comes on the same day as his new album. We could, could, but we still could. 
putting on for the A in his first single from that new album. While it's not yet known if he's going to, you know, perform any of those new songs. A part of the halftime show, a number of people already talking about the biggest hits they do want to see the Grammy Award winner singer perform. I mean, the hits are endless. The hits are endless. He's the man right now. Everybody's talking about his uh, residency in Vegas. So, perfect timing. And you okay. saw that show. I saw that show. Yeah, yeah. I can't good. tell the difference between young Usher and older Usher. And that's yeah. why he's Usher. Today, Usher. <laughs> mm -hmm. Does he age? No, he does not. That's amazing. He does not. If you look on the Vogue magazine Instagram page, he does his skincare routine if you want to take some I'm notes. Getting, I'm getting right to it. Straight to it. Have a good day, everybody. <laughs>